soul. John Bonet Ramsey case. Why everybody Why believes, believes Patsy is guilty. guilty. The phony ransom note. John Bonet wrapped in the white blanket. Patsy's fingerprints on the bowl of pineapple. Calling her friends after the 911 call. Fibers on the duct tape. Patsy's paintbrush handle used for the garrote. Patsy in the same clothes as the night before. Patsy's strange behavior on December 26th. The Ransom Note, our first stop on this road trip. Most people believe that Patsy wrote the Ransom Note because she was comfortable writing letters and notes. The overall style looks like Patsy wrote it and John probably didn't write many letters or notes. Now here on this side by side with the ransom note to the left, you can see the indentation, paragraph indentation is about the same distance and the explanation marks and some other similarities. Now on this side by side, I just wanted to point out that Patsy had used an A like in the ransom note. So this is from a Paget entry. And then this one here, side by side, with the ransom note to the left, is something that Patsy wrote way prior to 1996. And there's a few words there that are the same in both the ransom note and in this note. So you can compare the my, the and, and some of the letters like T. Okay, and this side by side, uh, Patsy wrote on a pageant badge, hello, I'm Marilyn Monroe. And so you can look at some of the similar letters there. And then I noticed or pointed out before the CU in 1997. You can see it in the ransom note, and then you can see it in Patsy's Christmas letter three times. The bottom one, the closest to the same word usage as in the ransom note. John Bonet wrapped in a white blanket is the next stop on our trip. Everybody sees this as kind of a remorseful act by the mom. Also in the ransom note, you have this return the body for proper burial. And it's probably not something John Ramsey would do, even though I think he could have done this. And it doesn't look like an intruder did something like this. Patsy's fingerprints found on the bowl of pineapple. Well, I don't know. I didn't put that there. No, Patsy said. It was Patsy's fingerprints on the bowl, according to police, suggesting that Patsy gave the fruit to her daughter. But if Patsy did give it to her and was lying about it, the investigators wondered could she be lying about everything? Sometimes the simplest, most obscure little thing could be so significant, Haney said. The significance of the bowl of pineapple is it's solid evidence and you can't make it go away. It has Patsy's fingerprints on it. So either Patsy or John Ramsey are lying about the bowl of pineapple. 
Some people try to argue away the bowl of pineapple, but it doesn't matter if John Bonet had pineapple in her digestive system or not, that bowl is still there. And they said that they didn't see it out there or had nothing to do with it. And if the crime scene advocates or one of Patsy's friends got this out, which is pretty ridiculous, but if that happened, then their fingerprints would be on the bowl. And they're not. Patsy's telephone calls to 911 and her friends. Everybody feels that Patsy is not sincere in this 911 call. In this part where she says, what? makes it stick out, so. Oh my God, this is the same checker? What? Is it the same checker? I don't know. Furthermore, Patsy says how the note ends with the SBTC victory. Yet she said she didn't read the note. And she hung up the phone on the 911 operator and then called Priscilla White and spoke to her shortly and hung up the phone on her, according to Priscilla. And she called Barbara Fernie and she hung up on her, I assume. So that is just very odd behavior. Patsy's jacket or sweater fibers on the duct tape. Everybody feels Patsy is guilty because of the jacket fibers on the duct tape, on John Bonet's white blanket, on the paintbrush tote, and on the garrote, according to many, according to some information out there on the internet. Patsy's paintbrush handle used for the garrote. Now here's the garrote. And Patsy didn't have a lot of time that night to stage all this. You know, she accidentally killed John Bonet or struck out and injured John Bonet. And she wrote the ransom note and she staged the crime and she couldn't leave the house. So this could be an obvious goof on her part by using the paintbrush handle to make the garrote. The same clothes as the night before. Everyone believes this is a dead giveaway, that she'd been up all night. She's wearing the same clothes as the night before. And Patsy was wealthy and enjoyed wearing different outfits. So the fact that she would wear the same clothes going on a trip that morning with her relatives doesn't make any sense. Furthermore, she, her hair was done and her makeup was on. Patsy's strange behavior on December 26th. Patsy called her friends Priscilla White and Barbara Fernie to come over right away. Why? Why would she want them to come over there that morning? It seems like when she talked to them on the phone, she'd want to know or talk about the kidnapping. Then after calling, Patsy, that morning, never looked for John Bonet. Check the house. She didn't go down in the basement and look. That's kind of a telltale sign that she's the one that put John Bonet's dead body in the basement wine cellar because she never went down there. And Patsy was crying and not talking to anyone the whole morning through during the kidnapping phase. Now it's natural that she'd be upset and maybe cry at certain periods, 
but it's kind of childish believing that she'd be kind of crawled up in a little ball the whole time when her input would have been important to help or assist John Bonet that morning. Unless, of course, she knew nothing was going to help and John Bonet was dead. This ends another episode of Unsolved. And I'm working on the next few episodes. One about John's Access Graphics luncheon. One about the parade with John Bonet. And one called Who Knew the Dog Was Out. So I'll see you the next time.